Hey, it's John on the Play Wizard. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a kind of cool company that I like a lot. I uh, did a little product review for you guys, kind of show off uh, for Skeleton Key Games. Uh, and I'm going to show off their dossier decks. So, what are dossier decks? Well, they did a Kickstarter and they did it successfully. And I've been backing them for a while, uh, a few different Kickstarters here and there for a very different product, but we'll talk about that here in a second. But they are these. Uh, and I picked up these three. I didn't pick up all of them. There's one, I think it's called Goblins and Orcs or something like that. But I picked up the Merchants, the Commoners, and the Mages. Um, and they're kind of a quick and dirty way to do NPCs, uh, to kind of like have quick uh, concepts for characters, uh, both in terms of appearance, name, motivation, and then like if you want to give your players a story hook or something like that, or something that this, this character, this NPC you just created might be interested in. Now previously they've done uh, quite a few successful Kickstarters uh, for their spell scrolls. And uh, it's called, I think it's called Scroll Works. But I picked up all of them. I love them. Actually, I adore them. So, like, uh, and they, they're basically these. They're kind of classic DD spells uh, done up in, like, a, uh, they're a combination of printed and then uh, hand painted. Um, this is, like, Alter Self. Um, I think, what other ones I got in here? Uh, Magic Circle. So, stuff like that. Um, and they're, they're kind of fun to look at. I think this is Invisibility. Something like that. So there, there's a whole bunch of them, and they're, they're a blast. And they're, they're really, really cool props for the table. They're cool props to have around, kind of inspire you, uh, what have you. But they, um, so I've been following these guys for a while, and this is the first time I've actually bought like a, like more of an in-game supplement uh, from them. There wasn't just like an outside prop or something for us to kind of look at. And so I want to kind of show you what these are and kind of how they work. And we'll just kind of I'll play with them real quick myself here too. Let me shuffle them up actually. So they're, so basically each one of those decks is, is three decks. Um, and the three decks are appearance, traits, and story hook. Now, the way it works is you draw one from each, put it together, and you got yourself NPC. Um, and the art of these is solid. Um, they're, there's some of them more art than others. Uh, their covers, like they had Dean Spencer. If you know anything from DMs Guild, if you've ever bought anything from the DMs Guild, you probably have something with Dean Spencer art in it. I know we used a lot of that for Color and Towers, uh, Wolf Lord Yul. A lot of Dean Spencer art. I think most, I think it's everything in there is Dean Spencer. Uh, but um, they use a lot of good stock art and got some new, new art for it, and uh, they're solid. But let me go ahead and play with these real quick. So, right now, I am holding the merchant deck. Okay, so this is a deck of like kind of merchants. So, like, you're, you know, every character goes and encounters a merchant, they might be protecting them, might want to buy from them, might be something that gives them a quest, is someone of wealth, all kinds of stuff like that. So, I'm going to pull a card, kind of pull an appearance card, and then I'm going to pull a trait card. And I'm gonna pull a story hook card. Okay, so I have all three of my cards here. So what I'll do here is I'll well, look at the, well, I can go to my players and be like, all right, and I've never I just drew these randomly, so I'll I'll make it up right now, I'll kind of DM through it what my players would do. So I said, all right, well you meet uh Tarisna Meldar Mel Meladar, okay, I believe is how it's pronounced. And it looked like this. And it, it, I can either show them that or I can sit there and read the description which says, uh, this heavily tattooed dark elf has tightly curled white hair, which is what that has. This might give them some more coloration in terms of clothing, the way they stand, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so you meet this dark elf, um, and I, you know, right now I, I it's up in the air if this is a male or female character. I could go either way on it. I can go if they're not binary. I have a lot of options right now based on just that card. Um, and I think they're all. I think they're all gender neutral too. I think they all are. I could be mistaken on that. But let's go ahead and see what their um, uh, what their uh, traits are so you meet you know you meet uh Trisna and Trisna is um simply put they'll stick to their prices if you go to purchase something from Trisna and they say it's going to cost this much it's going to cost this much there's not going to be any kind of uh debate that's what it is um it does it does get them uh kind of in trouble people feel like they're too much like a hard ass or too hard lining but at the same time, Teresa sleeps well knowing that they didn't get ripped off. Okay, so that's one of them. Another one I can say here is uh, this character is fascinated by those of Draconic heritage and will soften the take it or leave it stance when dealing with them. So here's an exception: they might they might change their behavior based on certain uh, things that happen. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of a basically the character has a prejudice. A prejudice. Uh, they have kind of a preference to deal with people. They're just kind of fascinated by them. They're interested in them. They have history of them. They maybe feel some sort of kinship. We don't know why they have this. They kind of have a soft. Point. Point for it, but we can let that develop with the characters. And the last one says Woodcarver. This character carries a sharp knife and a piece of wood they are carving into an intricate dragon design. There's a lot of dragon themes here. Um, 
when they're able, they will work on large carvings such as door headers and decorative hardwood columns. So that might be what they kind of primarily deal in in, in terms of uh, merc uh, their mercantile nature. Now, what's really cool about this is it doesn't say they sell that. That might just be a hobby. So I have a lot of leeway here, even with this general thing. But that could be for anybody. So then finally, we have our hook card, our story hook. And I pulled one called Outside Pet. Now this might play. This is, I, I pulled this randomly, so this is, and it, this lines up pretty wild actually. Uh, this character has purchased a tiny dragon from a traveling wizard. So recently, they now have procured this pseudo dragon, or maybe it's a as a wormling. Lately, they've become uneasy. I'm guessing they mean the dragon or the purse. I can't tell. Uh, it could be the wizard actually. Technically, if we go with pronouns, it would be the uh, wizard. But um, the dragon has destroyed every manner of confinement they can come up with, and they seem to grow more feral by the day. If they can't find a solution, they fear the dragon may escape and wreak havoc. They do not wish anyone to be injured. So this would be the story hook, is that uh, Tristna loves dragons, is really interested in the dragon folk, and anyone kind of associated with dragons, has purchased a dragon recently, in fact. And people might have heard of this dragon. Might have gotten loose and uh, gone and chased a horse down the street or something like that, and everybody kind of saw it. Um, and Teresa's like, hey, you know, uh, I, got this dra I got this dragon and I'm looking to find something that it can't get through. Uh, you know, I need some way to keep it uh, in my possession. Uh, might be able to help. Um, and this dragon also might be growing more feral for different reasons, too. So there's, a, there's kind of a cool little story hook there we can play with. But that's kind of what the cards do. Um, and there's a variety of individuals. I can pull some more here. So here I have a uh, Busha Kualani. And this is this bald elf has exotic red skin and an air of authority, so they seem to be someone that is in charge. Once again, this is, this is the merchant deck, and you can mix and match these. You don't you don't have to just keep the merchants to the merchants. You don't have to keep the commoners to the commoners and the mages to the mages. You can mix and match them up. But these are kind of specialized uh, bits. Their traits with uh, Basa is uh, I'll go with the second one here. Uh, see the hidden. This character can see invisible and otherwise obscured people or objects, and they habitually search for anything invisible, obscured, or disguised. Unlike their usual uh, fur furtive glances, which we talked about how they have an air of authority on them, they're always kind of staring at people, they find it difficult to look away from anything that's visually altered or hidden. So they'll notice their secrets and like that, which is kind of kind of nasty for a uh, merchant. And then uh, they're, man, I can't even pull these cards. This is a, pulled uh, one called the Hidden World. This character conducts business with the Fey Realm. So this makes a lot more sense for an elf. They can see these hidden things uh, via a secret route. Hmm. Entry into the realm is only possible by uh, executing a specific series of words, motions at a specific time and location. So this is kind of like the feyline things, the, um, the, the transitory areas, kind of place where the, the, the veil between worlds is thin. Uh, precision is key and knowledge of the entry ritual does not guarantee will work. This character always brings gifts to the fey. So this could be a character we're trying to get, if they're trying to get to the fey wild, maybe you can use them uh, as they kind of, this kind of interesting different nature about them that they can see invisible things. Um, but they have an authority about like, oh, you, you came to me for the fate well, well, I'm the person to see that. So I will, if you want to get there, you have to go through me. But we'll, we'll work something out. So it's kind of fun. Um, and what's really cool too is, I don't know if they were bonus cards for the uh, the Kickstarter, but I got these bonus cards in the, in the decks, which were, each one was like an epic card. One was um, a Lich, one was this Prince, and I think the Lich came with the Commoners, which is kind of creepy. Um, and then one was this kind of uh, swashbuckler, Duelist, uh, Yasala, Embersil, and uh, kind of a fun piece. So that, that came with the Mage deck, which is interesting too. But the, no, the noble, you know, this uh, Gastrod uh, Karothriar. This noble's armor is worth more than a peasant makes in a lifetime. So kind of a fun little piece. So yeah, that's kind of what these um, what these cards are, and I can see really using these uh, well. I, I tend to improv a lot when I play. So like I don't I don't come to the table with like all my MPs written up. Um, I might have a name generator or something like that, and I kind of have an idea of what people want and what I want to get out of the game. If you watch me run, I'm using a name generator. My players are making fun of me for doing it, but that's fine. Um, but this would be a great way to do it. My my like quandary with this is that these names would get a little tiresome. They are kind of named, and, and but they're they're good on the fly by all means. But uh, you might um, and this is, this is it's weird for me because I kind of have dialects in my game um, that I kind of pull on. So, but yeah, they're great cards. Uh, great, great thing from Skeleton Key Games. I am not sure if they are current. I think they're currently out. Um, I think you can, you can. They're pre-ordered. I just got them, uh, and I think right now they run for. You can get all four decks for fifty-six dollars, which ain't bad. I'm gonna tell you, it's not bad. Uh, each each deck's fifty-one cards. Um, the extra card is, I believe, the. I think there's a bonus card in there too. 
Um, but yeah, it's a good it's a good little deal if you're looking for. I'm kind of regretting not picking the orcs and goblins, but I'm also I don't my orcs and my orcs and goblins are very are varied heavily in my game too. So uh, orcs for me are like there's different cultures, there's many different cultures of orcs. So we, I have the classic kind of like brutal uh, wild orcs. I have orcs that are more like um, sailors. I want to say pirates, if you will. Um, I have orcs that. Uh, are kind of like religious refugees. Um, I have ones that, you know, there's, there's, there are different people from different places. Some are frostbitten, some are swamp dwellers, uh, some are like jungle uh, dwellers, uh, but they're all kind of from, they're all commonalities, they all come from a fallen empire. And ergo why they're scattered to the winds. So it's, you know, it's kind of, it's a, it's kind of a fun bit, but yeah, you can use these or take, take them or leave them. Um, I highly recommend them though. I, I, you know, I definitely would pick these up for anybody uh, starting out. If you're not sure how to do NPC, you need to be on the fly. This is a great little tool. Um, reminds me a lot of kind of like the story hook dice. I've used those before and stuff like that. But these um, high quality card stock, uh, they feel good. They, you know, they got some nice flick to them. Um, the different stuff in here is really interesting too. So and like I, I have not pull ones that lined up. I swear to God, I shuffled these. Um, ones like they're a zookeeper and I have some of them even have quotes on them too. So like the barter town uh, trait. This character has access to most common adventuring items. They prefer to barter because they are not good with money. Kind of cool. Uh, they do, however, have an uncanny knack for knowing the value of items. And then they have a quote from the character that says, I'll take no less than two chickens for this finely crafted rope. You know, so that's kind of, it's kind of shows you get an attitude, you get a line you can deliver to. So this is a great little tool. I, I'd, I'd recommend it, pick them up. Um, price is right on them as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you get so many combinations. They, they advertise that there is uh, 4,913 combos per deck. And you can pick up all the decks and then you can mix and match them and kind of gear your uh, your storyline to what you want. But a great way to come up with side quests real quick if you need to come up with a, an idea for a game uh, you might have forgotten or something like that. So, but yeah, um, and, they, and I forgot they do come with like little extra cards. Like they have a you know credit a card of credits on it and they have a card like the instructions, which are I mean it's pretty straightforward. Uh, their motto is shuffle, create, repeat. So, anyways, uh, but yeah, that's it. Dossier decks by Skeleton Key Games. I recommend it. Um, I picked up these three. Uh, they're very broad. Uh, there are characters in here that are half orcs. Uh, one of them, the mage, is, looks like a Goliath, maybe even a stone giant. Um, some of the cards, I like the nondescript. I like how it's not so locked down. Um, the commoners are cool because there's, like, there's like Dragonborn in here. There's some people that are like uh, gnomes. There's a really good diversity set of um, representation in here. Uh, oh my god, so I love this. This is actually one of my favorite ones. Uh, who is this by? Uh, Lilia. This uh, Tarja Ruby Brook. Uh, this is adorable. I love that hat. Um, and there's, you know, gnomes, whatever you need here, orcs. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff here. The mages are a little more, the mages are a little more fun. I, I, I'm actually going to plan on using these for, uh, my Wednesday game is dealing with some wizards. And I haven't really generated those wizards yet, so but I'm going to have to go ahead and, uh, I'll knock them out of this deck here. Uh, I do it here. On, I do it here, but I don't want to spoil anything for them, so uh, I'll let them get to it. But yeah, it was fun. So yeah, Skeleton Key Games. Uh, you can check them out, SkeletonKeyGames.com. I'll put a link down in the uh, the description. Uh, give them a look. Uh, their spell scrolls are ready. Actually, they have them out right now. If you, if you want to pick up any of them, go for it. I highly recommend them. They're very nice, great pieces of art. If you need them, if you want to have them up on your wall or whatever it is. But uh, yeah, I like this company a lot. This is like one of my favorite companies producing uh, third-party stuff if you will for uh, role-playing games right now all right guys thanks for hanging out and watching uh i hope you enjoyed it I hope it was informative I hope you kind of like go check them out um but i'll put links down in the description okay all right thanks